Hello out there, great lands. Welcome to the bleeding edge, as we're now going to be, going to be called by no, people. No, no, no. Just FYI. No, no, no. Um, uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The the MCU's bleeding edge is now going to become the bleeding edge, folks. FYI, just joking with you guys. Anyways, so no. welcome to the MCU's bleeding edge. You're joking, uh, Diver. And uh, we are here tonight, and we're going to be discussing... The film known as Starship Troopers. That's right. We're going to be talking about the 1997 classic, which uh, has become a cult favorite over the years. Unfortunately, when it first came out, it was considered a box office bomb, but it did accrue a cult following. That was weird. It just said broadcast live on my end just now. That was weird. Well, anyways... On my side here, it said broadcast is live all of a sudden. It was funny. Anyways. Uh-oh. So, yeah, we're going to be talking about Starship Troopers, people. Yeah, from 1997. All right. So, to kind of get you guys into the loop of what it is. Uh, so, this is actually based off a book that was written in the 1970s called Starship Troopers. Originally, when this film was uh, being written by the aforementioned uh, uh, writers for this film. They actually had kind of a different concept going. And when uh, the studios as X started looking at it, they noticed the similarities to the a book from the, from the 70s called Starship Troopers and said, how about if you were to basically write the movie even closer to the book so that you know it'll draw in more people uh, and to get you financing. So the writer, Ed Gernheim, uh, actually ended up doing that. He actually rewrote the script, uh, being more accurate to the book, and end up that started getting more film uh, attention from the studios to make this film. So this was directed by Paul Verhoeven, which we all know as the director of such films as, of course, Total Recall, Basic Instinct, uh, Showgirls, Hollow Man, uh, you know, uh, uh, Robocop, of course, one of his best, uh, as me and Andres was saying earlier as we were talking to the studio, we think probably Robocop is one of Paul Verhoeven's best films. And uh, this was actually made on a between a hundred to hundred and ten dollar, uh, <laughs> hundred and ten million dollar budget, uh, uh, back in 1997. Uh, which basically it ended up becoming a box up bomb because it only made 121 million while it was in theaters. It really started to make money when it hit DVD sales and VHS sales uh, later uh, in 1998. So that's really when this movie really started making money for the studio. But it was actually considered a box up bomb. The critics hor- hated it. They thought that it was horrible. Uh, a lot of uh, critics were even saying that they felt that there was Nazi ties to this film for some odd reason. Uh, some uh, feelings of, you know, like propaganda and stuff like that uh, because of kind of the feel it had at the time. But then as time has gone on, uh, a lot of critics have reevaluated that and realized that this is actually a cult phenomenon of a film and that it's actually really well done for its time. So this was released in November 7th of 1997. The production filmed this during 1996. And uh, when it got released, like I said, in 1997, it was only released in, I think, it said 2,523 theaters. So it wasn't uh, all across America. uh, And it it actually had kind of a smaller opening versus some of the films that came out around the same time in 1997. So I, I think it was, uh, you know, I think that just played it kind of probably into it not having as big of an opening and so forth as well, or being in enough theaters to really make money anyways. Uh, it being a sci-fi film, a lot, I think a lot of, you know, companies, even back in 1997, didn't really care too much for sci-fi films. And, you know, it, it just, they weren't as popular as, as I feel like in the eighties or even in the early two thousands when they kind of re kind of entered into that phase and really started making a lot of these sci-fi type of films. And it's rated R too. Yeah. And being rated R, it didn't appeal to kids as well. Boy. So, you know, that always, you know, pulls in less crowd, but I mean, even in 1997, I feel a lot of people still took their kids to R rated films. I mean, so many yeah. kids are taking R rated films these days now. 
Uh, so I, I don't think that really played too much in it, but it might have played a little bit more because back then it was a little bit more taken a little more seriously, taking kids to an R-rated film. So uh, that's a good point. It is. Anyways, so uh, this was brought to us by Sony Pictures, actually. It was released by Sony Pictures in 1997. And uh, just to go around, uh, you know, the kind of the panel here real quick, I, I want to get your guys' first thoughts on the film. What was your first thoughts when you saw this for the first time? And just just examine just your first time. Don't go off in any, anything else. Just talk about your first time. So, starting with you, Andre. <laughs> Ha-ha! Uh, yeah. Ha-ha! Seven minutes. Uh, I'll give it three words. Uh, hilarious. I thought I was watching a product data that was mocking society. And, yeah, I I thought the bugs were cool. So it was one of those interesting sci-fi films that I saw. Uh, any of the cyber projects uh, that I saw beforehand. Wow. That's it? Yeah. I mean, there's more to talk about, but I'm not going to spend what about your whole 24 seven minutes? minutes. What about your seven minutes? That's it. Short, short, simple. <laughs> short and sweet to the point. Good oh job, Andre. Good job. Jeff, same question, sir. Your first thoughts the first time you saw it. Oh, man, I thought it was awesome. Bet that I couldn't detect shitty acting, right? Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, I couldn't tell, really. You know that when, when like somebody was just when some, when that just really wasn't good all that good, or like you know whatever wasn't very authentic. The, I'll tell you right now, watching it in 4K was fucking crazy. Like I'm, I don't mean to like push forward, but it was watch, watching it 4K compared to back then. The first time I watched it was on like one of those 13 inch TVs in my room, right? You know, in my bedroom, because back then when you were a kid, that's what you had. If you were lucky, you had a TV. You had like that, you know, like the 10 incher or the 13 incher or something like that. I did. Um, and, uh, I can't even imagine what the quality of that TV was like compared to the one I have now. Holy shit. Um, but no, it was good, man. I loved it. I thought the action was great for back then, man. The bugs look great. The aliens, the bugs, they were yeah. dope. You know? Um, I mean, Hey, it's a long time ago, 1997. Wow. Um, how many years is that? What? Uh, 26, 26 years. Jeez. Tex, holy shit. You're back from the dead again. Yeah, Andre, Tex is actually not as uh, not dead, though. Um, what's up, Tex? No, Cyber, honestly, I thought it was great. Uh, bet that I thought Denise Richards was absolutely, like, the most gorgeous woman in the world at that point. She was so fine. Um, I actually thought this was one of her better serious roles, too, at that at that time. Like, I thought this was actually her, he, her being pretty serious, right? Yeah. Um, you know? know? Yeah. Um, and um, if anything... Uh, I thought that I didn't get the tropes that I see now, right? Like cyber. When I remember when I when I said to you, I thought it was a comedy. Well, it's not a comedy, right? But there is some spoofy shit in there, isn't there? Where they kind of play off older tropes of with war throughout history and stuff like that, but not throughout the film. And they kind of get farcical with it a little bit. Well, yeah. There's uh, Paul Verhoeven's known for adding comical things to his film. Yes. Yes, yeah, so there was there, but it was but it was interestingly done, right? It was the way that they that like the media how they would act, how they interacted in the film. I didn't get that back then. I didn't understand the humor. I thought they were being serious. Um, I really cared about the action scenes and the fact that they had like nudity, right? You know, back then nudity was like a part of every film. Um, you know that freaking uh, that co-ed shower scene is dope. That's awesome, man. Seriously. Never happened now, but um, no, really good, really good action. And um, I thought that, um, you know, when it boiled down to it, I thought that Casper Van Diem like killed it as a kid in that film. I really did. And I even liked the um, the uh, the pilot that is like buddy that likes um, his girl, this Richards character. Yeah, I liked him too. I thought he was good, and I liked how you know how he his character kind of. Gave him like sort of a rival or an antagonist kind of, but yet they came together like towards the end, you know. I like that. So yeah, I thought. It was, I mean, honestly, I didn't know the I didn't know the film was so well 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 poorly received back then. I had no idea. Thank you. All right. So 
this film basically starts off uh, kind of in the future, and it gives us an idea of them battling the bugs, and basically it shows them kind of in mid-battle, and after the mid-battle, we see Casper and Dean get, you know, shoved in his thigh by a bug, and uh, he's like going, oh, oh, like he's in pain, and then all of a sudden he goes, one year earlier. And so basically then the pretty much the beginning of the film is showing him he's finished up high school. Uh, we're introduced to Denise Richards. Uh, we're introduced to Diane Myers, who I particularly thought Diane Myers was a lot more attractive than uh, Denise Richards was. Uh, I think she played the character better, and I thought she was more badass than Denise Richards was in the film. And uh, we're introduced to Neil Patrick Harris's character. We're introduced to Casper and Dean's parents. Uh, and we kind of get a sense of what they're, you know, about. Michael Ironside is introduced as a teacher at first before actually becoming kind of the general that he uh, or the officer he ends up becoming later on in the film. And, uh, you know, basically because of Michael Ironside, that gets, you know, kind of uh, invigorates Casper Dean to want to become a, you know, a part of the military and become a, you know, uh, what, whatever they call citizens. And, um, I mean, but that's not only we, you know, that's not the only reason why he wants to go in because Denise Richards wants to go in. He wants to go with her too. So basically we kind of see them get together, uh, have like a dance. We see them kind of, you know, you know, making decisions whether or not they're going to go in. And then basically we have them, you know, join. We have a great football sequence there where it shows them playing football, which is really awesome. Uh, the uh, the tigers versus the the lions, which was really funny. Uh, we're introduced to Patrick Muldoon there, uh, who plays kind of the other love interest of Denise Richards' character in the film. And uh, you know, we kind of get all that kind of cool little like fu- football sequence. It kind of made me think a little bit uh, of the football sequence and the film The Sixth Day with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Kind of gave me that same vibe. And uh, which was only a three year gap between those two films. Uh, that came out in 2000. This came out in 97. And uh, so we get that sequence. And then finally, they, you know, uh, basically, you know, Casper and Dean's parents disown him because he's going into the military. Uh, and then he and Denise Richards go and they go their separate ways and, you know, basically end up going off to boot camp. So. Before we move on past that, what was everyone's thoughts on the beginning of the film? What did you think about that? How did you – did you appreciate it this time around more than maybe the first time you watched it? Did you notice any differences? Uh, how did you feel about the look of it being 26 years old? And uh, was there anything that you particularly enjoyed about this opening sequence? Uh, starting with you, Jeff. There you go, Andres. You get to come after me, brother. Just for you, baby. Um, good job, Cyber. Uh, no, um, I think that um, you point out some good things, and uh, RoboCop is a really great film. You're right, it is. All the films I think he did were really good. Uh, how do you pronounce his name? Is it is it Borning? Or the, the director, director? Mm-hmm. Verhoeven. Verhoeven. I apologize. No, RoboCop is a classic. It really is classic film. But no, um, honestly, um, the only thing that I thought was kind of weird that kind of fell out of place a little bit was. Are we going as far as when they come apart and they're just like all happy about it? They're like, oh, well, I guess we're all just going to go our separate ways now. And yeah, you know. that's where I ended it. Okay. Yeah, they seemed like, like, I mean, they were so like nonchalant about it. Like they were smiling and everything and whatnot, right? I mean, right, you know, didn't they get their tats then right at that point or whatever? Or was that later? I can't remember. No, they seem so nonchalant. The tats were later. But no, they yeah. seem so when they become part of you know Ryback's uh, you know um, uh, what's it called his group or whatever whatnot Ryback's okay. Roughnecks yes no um they seem so nonchalant like they were just chill like you know like you'd think if they were kids if they were friends forever growing up and whatnot and everything I know that my friends when I, well, like I left New York I was heartbroken to like leave my friends in New York I, I hurt I I felt pain like I felt like lost like I was gonna like I I didn't know I'd see him again. Uh, I still miss them all the time and whatnot and everything. But, like, that was kind of, like, weird, I thought. Um, they seemed, like, jubilant about it or whatever. But, um, no, the Citizens Recrap and whatnot and everything was interesting. I like that angle, right? 
um, that you had to earn citizenship because of war, right? Um, there's some references throughout the film where they use certain terms that are actually similar to the Halo books and the, the actual Halo origin story from the video games, like the word glassing, right, of the planet whatnot, right? Um, and they use a couple different words that, that, that I don't know if they borrowed them in the Halo shit, but I heard them in here. I didn't, know, didn't notice it the first couple times I saw it. Um, maybe they're just common words that you would use in these kind of tropes, these kind of films. Uh, but I like the fact that this is in the future, right? At that time. And then now it's in, it's in the future. Yet a lot of the, um, the sort of stuff that they show us there in the intro, the football game, that's like all futuristic, right? Um, you know, the father being unhappy with, um, with Rico, right? Hell no, you're not joining the military. You're going to Harvard. That's something like you would expect to hear in like a film from 1950 or like 1960 or whatever, whatnot, right? It's, so it's, I like how they, they use traditional tropes in this futuristic sci-fi film, even for back then. Um, again, I didn't know this when I was 13 or whatever, or 14 when I watched it. But um, no, and uh, like I said, um, the camaraderie is really cool between the characters. Uh, the actress that plays Dez, I'll pull up her name. I love her in the film. She's great. I Diana love, Myers. Diana Myers. I love Dez. I think she's one of the best best characters in the whole film. Um, you know, she actually kind of like adds some real depth and like some real kind of like comedic fla like flavor here and there, and and also some you know some sultriness and some sex appeal, and she also can act a little bit too. Um, I liked her scenes. I liked her in the beginning. I liked how they flushed out the whole sort of dynamic that she like basically is into Johnny Rico and whatnot, right? It was very much like a like a, a, a futuristic varsity blues kind of version type deal in a way, to some extent, like sort of trope. Um, and um, just a good intro, just really good intro, very solid. They really explain everything very clearly. Um, and it's funny as shit when they actually uh, when Diddy's Richards pukes or whatever. Um, and everything because they have to like take apart the bug. That was great. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Andres, same question, sir. Yeah, sure. Uh yeah, I I, I thought the you know the intro before the boot uh was a good sequence to get to know about the characters and and the world we're gonna inhabit. Uh and you know, if you if you've seen uh Robocop, this employs a lot of the like robocop themes like you know the media the you know the satire and then you know of course you know where robocop it was company you know was company on corporation and, and corruption and greed here you know we're talking about military you know fashions and i think that it's full on in this sequence uh you know particularly you know rico is like being pulled into the system of becoming a citizen which is, you know, it's, it's like literally brainwashing these kids to join this cause that is, like, so unnecessary. Like, you know, and because, like, you, like, these bugs are probably defending itself from these ridiculous humans that are just evading this plan for no good reason. So it's like right away we know that this world is just over the top and, and just, you know, it's, it's just very fascist in a very way, a very good way in film. Um, I, in, in this recent review, I, uh, the recent viewing of this movie today, uh, it was weird to, um, show Rico, like, we get first in the battleground and before cutting back to the past. Um, I, I that's kind of weird. I mean, I get you want to see the bugs, but like, I, I feel like that was a little jarring to me. That okay, we're here in the battleground, and then we had to cut back to one year earlier. Like I don't know, I think it's very unnecessary to use that. Like I think it was that was just better to the, like maybe opening up the film on a like a medium, uh, like a TV commercial or something like that that we we see in the film. I think that could have been a better opening than than starting with the battleground and then cutting back to the one year later thing, but that's just a minor nitpick. Um, but yeah, 26 years, uh, this movie looks great. I, I think the production science is so like 
great. Like, uh, one thing that I think this movie does better than some other 90s movie, this this feels like, like this is the world we lived in. Like, you know, the kids are actually dressing in clothes that's like actually as of today, you know? And it's not like over the top or like, like, like over the top and campy like some of the 90s sci fi movies that we've seen. If you've seen that here, it's like like the clothes are like grounded and we understand that like that. Where the ones that is like futuristic is like the military gear or, you know, the the colonels or, you know, the generals. Like it makes sense with their like uniforms. It's a little more futuristic, which is good. Uh, I thought the production design in the last 26 years, this looks timeless. And uh, speaking of which is the score uh, by Basil... Uh, Bass Pertussel, I, I cannot say the composer, the composer that did the first Robocop, he's he's brought into this movie and he really delivers the the military uh, aspect of this film during this sequence, which is good. Paul Darius. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, so yeah, I, I think that's great. Um, and I, I think this sequence does a really good job of getting to know uh, Johnny Rico like how he's so direct, like direct, uh, direct to this. Like he just joined the the army because of a girl, and you know throughout the movie he started to learn how to become his own person. And so I think the sequence sets up how his character is throughout the movies. He's very direct, uh, direct to this, you know, um, and you know, and I, uh, we watching this, I this actually did a good job of setting up the love triangle and i like how the love triangle is not over dramatic uh in the film it's just kind of there it's like okay you know carmen and johnny are like a thing but then they kind of shift the uh shift the apart and then he starts to get into more of ds and the character more when you know they're in the the book camp and throughout the film so i think this whole sequence sets up their like the three character dynamics uh throughout the film very well in this first sequence, when we meet them, uh, Neil, uh, Neil Patrick Harris, he's a great actor. I love him. Uh, I think he, his character is really great. I wish we had more of him, but I think his chemistry with Johnny was really great. And, um, you know, uh, responding to your Jeff about, you know, uh, they're happy go lucky and then not feeling sad, I think that was just like, I think that's intentional because how they're like, you know, it, it's kind of like, when you go out, when you're done high school, you feel happy because you, you're done with this educational. But then when you go to a career or you, you go to college, you know, you, you like, you end up being more cynical or like you're a little more um, jaded as we see with these three characters. Like these three characters will get jaded towards the end of the film, which we'll get into. But our role, I think this sequence was very good. Um, it, I mean, it's pull of them to the max, which was great. Um, the effects, the production design is t is timeless. Uh, it it hasn't been outdated, which is good. So I think this is a, a really great first act. Excellent, thank you. All right, tech's not dead. Uh, just want to shout you out again, sir. Thank you for coming into the comment section. Yes, co-ed showers. Yes, that is a great scene that we'll get up. We'll be talking about shortly here for you guys. Uh, hello there, Facebook user. Uh, probably uh, Joslyn. Hello, yeah. Joslyn. Yeah. And uh, welcome, welcome to the uh, chat. Uh, you want to redirect what? Oh, just I want to say, sorry, uh, I really agree with what Andre said. I, I thought they, they did a really good job of flushing out the whole love triangle really well in the intro. For a film that was so well-received, so poorly received, um, I thought the intro was really well-served to the whole film. That's it. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, Tech, you said, agree. The characters are young and dumb and feel invulnerable at the beginning of the film. Most definitely, Tech. Most definitely, I agree there. Yeah, most definitely, they are very, they're very green around the gills, as the, we would like to say. 
All right, so moving on. So after they part their ways where we left off, uh, basically uh, this majority of the film, we get to see quite a bit of them and their various tax, uh, tasks uh, and learning what they have been sent to do. Uh, like, you know, Andrea said, we don't get very much of Neil Patrick Harris. We get to see him a little bit here and there. Uh, but mostly it's uh, Johnny and, of course, Des and um, uh, Denise Richards' character. Uh, uh, we're also introduced to Amy Smart in this sequence, too, as well, during this time frame. Uh, she has a very small, short part as well, but it's really fun to see her in this. Uh, I believe at the time... When she filmed this, she was 23. So, yeah, uh, both her and Neil Patrick Harris were super young. They were, like, early 20s when they filmed this. Denise Richards was actually almost 30, and uh, Casper Evan Dean was almost 30 as well. And uh, and so was Diane Myers. They were all around the 30 age mark, which uh, you, you could tell they, they didn't look that uh, – they didn't look around that age, I felt. I felt they looked definitely a little bit younger. Uh, but you could definitely see how baby-faced like Amy Smart and Neil Patrick Harris were in this film. Uh, but yeah, most definitely you got, uh, you know, basically we we get that kind of that sequence where it shows, uh, you know, Denise Richards kind of learning how to pilot a, a ship. We see her and uh, Amy Smart kind of have that camaraderie a little bit, chasing off to go start their mission. Uh, we see Casper and Dean, Jake Busey, Diane Myers, and the rest of that, the infantry crew doing tasks and stuff like that. We see them training. Uh, we're also introduced to the awesome and amazing uh, Mr. Krabs himself in this, uh, Clancy Brown, uh, who I absolutely love him in this. He, uh, I think this is one of my favorite roles of his. I loved his character of the drill sergeant guy. I thought he did awesome with the character. I loved how nice he was, especially, you know, this being shortly after when Shawshank Redemption came out. Uh, a lot of people hated Clancy Brown because uh, of his character in Shawshank, just how much of a dick he was in that film. So it was nice to see him like kind of in a, a nicer kind of role, uh, even though it was kind of secretively, you know, how he did it. But still, you can see that he did care about Casper and Dean and that he really wanted him to, you know, uh, succeed in his role of becoming an infantry guy. Uh, but we get that kind of great sequence there where it shows them like doing their uh, learning how to use their guns and shooting stuff like that. We see them shooting the uh, the green guys and stuff like that using real live ammunition and stuff like that. We see them kind of like being drill sergeant and everything. And we have the one guy that laughs a little bit and make and then basically Clancy Brown makes him run laps. Uh, then uh, basically we see them, they're like running through everything, uh, doing like mud courses and stuff like that. Diane Maris is excelling, so is Casper and Dean. Uh, we see kind of that camaraderie and stuff like that. Uh, and then we eventually we get the scene where they're throwing, learning how to throw knives, and Jake Busey's like, why do we need to learn to throw knives? This is stupid. And uh, Clancy Brown's like, hey, go up against there. Put your hand out, son. And he throws the dagger right into his hand. And you can, you can see how fake the hand was, but at the same time, I thought they shot it really well. And uh, shortly after that happens, that's when we get our first, our co-ed shower scene tech. Oh, yeah. And uh, which surprisingly, you know, it's funny that they have them, both the women and men showering in the same thing. Uh, I, I thought this was clever, even though in the real military, this would not happen. But at the same time, I think that the, a lot of people enjoy this sequence. We get, you know, some great shots of uh, of s several of the actresses. And, and of course, for those ladies out there, the men in the, in the sequence, of course. Um, this is the first time seeing Diane Myers topless. You know, we get a few of the other people we see topless. And uh, it, it's an interesting kind of sequence because they're how they're talking and stuff like that. Like, this is so natural. I was fine. I found so hilarious watching this. Even back, you know, I think I saw this probably – uh, probably in 98, 99, I think it's the first time I watched it after it came out on DVD and, and, uh, the VHS. And, uh, I, I think I rented it from either Hollywood video or blockbuster. I can't remember. You do. And, and watched it. And, um, it, it was so funny. Cause it just like that, that scene always cracked me up and I'm like, wow, this is a real thing. I'm like, no, nah, this can't be a real thing. And then watching it now, you know, almost 30 years later, I'm like, ha this is hilarious, but fun at the same time. Uh, so we have that sequence and uh, we have kind of that great kind of like thing, like where they're uh, asking each other, like, oh, why did you enter? And like Jake Busey says uh, to do this and everyone else is saying this. And then they're like, ask Rico. And he's like, that's none of your business kind of. 
and then Diane Myers kind of pipes up because she finally pops up in there and like, you know, he entered for a girl type of deal thing. And uh, then one of the guys is like, is it, was it you? And she kind of like smirks like, mm, maybe it is me, but we all know it's not. It's for Denise Richards, but uh, they don't know that. So then uh, once again, we kind of go back and forth a little bit uh, between the mil- mil- the infantry and then Denise Richards character, along with all the people she's surrounded by seeing them kind of doing their training and stuff like that. And then eventually we get to the sequence where they're doing a military training. And unfortunately during, uh, during this se- sequence here, uh, not only does Casper and Dean get promoted, he actually ends up getting kind of like caught up uh, into being kind of like the sergeant of a particular mission that they're tr- doing training for. And unfortunately one of the, the military people gets killed uh, under his watch. And so when that happens, unfortunately, you know, he gets disciplined for this and he ends up getting flogged, uh, which basically we see kind of in this kind of great sequence where he's being strapped into the flogging thing. Fancy Brown, you know, says, I, I know you can do this, you know, bite down this. It helps better. I know from experience that this is what happened. And so uh, we see him get flogged and everything and kind of get demoted and uh, this is actually the first time we're introduced to Dean Norris as well uh, in this sequence. Uh, he's like a higher up of some sort, and he's, you know, the one asking the questions about what happened and all this kind of stuff. Uh, unfortunately, one of the other uh, infantry marine guys uh, or infantry people decide to resign after the one guy gets killed. So they lose two people at that time. And, you know, not not to get rid of any more, they decide to just kind of punish, uh, you know, Casper Van Dien's character, Johnny Rico. At the same time, too, uh, that's when, uh, you know, during this time frame, Casper and Dean gets the video message from Denise Richards' character saying that she wants to break up because she wants to go career with doing this. And uh, after that, that's when Patrick Muldoon kind of starts to swoop in and gets closer to Denise Richards' character. And we see kind of that unfold in that, too. So before we move on past that... Let's get everyone's thoughts on that sequence of the film. What did you think about like all that action and that awesomeness and kind of in between two, they kind of had like the ads that you were like clicking on your computer uh, for like joining the infantry and stuff like that and all that kind of good stuff. What were your thoughts on that sequence of the film and was there anything you enjoyed about it? Was there anything you hated about it? Just your overall thoughts on that particular area. Starting with you, Andreas. Um, first up, the Kodak, uh, the the Kodak, the uh, bath scene, whatever. Um, I that wasn't new to me because uh, Paul Hoven actually did this uh, in RoboCop. If you pay attention to RoboCop, the police station, both male and the females were in one location, and you saw one female is changing into the uh, the uh, what, what do you call it the a uh, bulletproof vest uh, before they go out patrol. So when I saw this, I, 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 you know, it's funny, but if you pay attention as a movie fan or, you know, a Paul Hoven, uh, a doozy, a doozy, um, or a fan, um, this was the second time he did this where he put a male, female, uh, you know, uh, people in, in one room, uh, that you don't usually, see in in these like police or military factions so and uh, yeah it's interesting he did this here in in starship troopers i think it's uh like it's kind of like a what if if you know everyone can be equal like you know this should be no problem in the future so i you know but it's it's very funny and 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 it's also what is funny is just how childish these soldiers are like you know they're like they're still acting like teenagers and like they're not taking in the the seriousness of war of these bugs so it's a very funny scene and you know and uh, Diane Manor is so funny she's really great when she comes into that you know telling you know the Rico's uh, reason to join the army it's hilarious I like her her glance and look well maybe it's me or you know during reachers it's it's really funny um so that. So this scene didn't bug me when I first saw it because, you know, it, it happened in Robocop. Anyway, um, yeah, this whole sequence is really fun. It, it's like the full metal jacket 
of sci-fi for me. Like this pro- full section is my favorite. I mean, just seeing everyone getting trained and, and just being <laughs> brainwashed into being these soldiers to kill bugs uh, later in the film. So it's, it's pretty funny. I mean, this is where the, the projection sign, the like the sci-fi this is is really full fronta uh full fronta in this uh, sequence uh the, the second major act which is great and uh you know i really love the guns like these guns are like second after the robocop gun and uh, i think that the production i did a really good job of designing the soldiers and uh uniform uh you know gear and all that it's it's really top notch in this thing um uh, I, and you know, I want to bring up the breakup, the you know, Daniel Reacher's breakup, Rico. That's a really good dramatic scene. I, I think that's actually one of the best Daniel, uh, Dennis Reacher's uh, acting. You know, we all can admit she's not a great actress. I think this scene, you know, I think this movie is one of her best actings, you know, as just as an actress. I thought that uh, video chat when she tells Rico that she's kind of moving on for him and she wants to more explode. I, I think that's a really good scene. Um, and then, uh, yeah, Clancy Brown, he's my favorite character. I love the running gag. Medic, medic, come. It's it's so hilarious, I just love that. I mean, especially when he breaks the soldier's arm, that's so hilarious. Um, by the way, I, I, I totally forgot he was in shock, uh, the same shock redemption, but also, uh, the year prior of this movie, he was also Lex Luthor in Superman Animated Series. So I'm just letting that, like, you know, letting that people know that he was still bad before this movie came out. Anyway, um, but yeah, I think this is actually the strongest um, part of the film. I think it's really engaging. The comedy works here. I really love the little band turns uh, between the cast members we see here interacting to Rico, like especially uh, the the fella who's playing, uh, what was the character's name? Uh, uh, not Sugar, uh, uh, Ace, uh, that's played by Jake Busey. Like, he's actually one of my favorite characters in the film. I thought he was really great. And I like how his relationship with Rico, like, really builds uh, upon in the sequence uh, and, and into the third act. So, overall, is a great second act, and I really liked it. And uh, just, leave us into a really great third act uh, when we get into that. Thank you, sir. Jeffrey, your thoughts, sir? Well, um, essentially, the, uh, the camaraderie, the shower scene is awesome. It really is awesome. It's, uh, I remember thinking it's too cyber. Like, I mean, we showered like that back in the gym class and whatnot and everything and after football practice and all that stuff and all that. That's how it was in our locker room. We had the, you know, the, the four-headed shower deal or whatever. We just stood around. But there were no chicks in there and whatnot, right? That'd be weird. Um, I wasn't all that secure with my penis and all that back then and whatnot, like openly like that. So I don't know how I would have been down with all that. But um, either way, um, bottom line, it, just, it was great. It's just the camaraderie of that. It's very mil- militaristic. You know, if you think about it, like how the military would be or should be. Obviously, it, it doesn't make sense logically that it would work out like that or whatever. Or you never have it that way. But what, you know, the Band of Brothers type deal, right? That they that they, that they flush that out in that kind of co-ed dynamic is cool. I like that. Um, and it is some really good humor. And uh, yes, ladies, um, Casper and DN had, had a nice looking ass back then. I'm sure he does now. Um, and then, um, when they're making fun of him, when he's on the video chat, Andres, and good that you mentioned the video chat. I never even thought about it. Like that was the first time I think maybe I'd ever seen really other than maybe one or two other films, including RoboCop, I think, right. Where they had video chat, right. Which we use now all the time. What not? It's like a regular thing. That's it true. never, it never occurred to me that like, that was actually a big deal back then to see that for me as a kid, I was like, holy fuck. Like, you know. Um, I mean, shit, I think back then even my dad had one of those, uh, those, still had one of those old school cell phones that like was like this big. Yeah. You know, with the antenna and all that stuff, you know, yeah, um, new. yeah, no, maybe, maybe he had moved past that a little bit, like at that point, but he, he was a couple of years removed from that. Um, 
we're talking like probably right around, I don't know what, a year or two after AOL came out. So we just had the internet, right? Um, so video chat was a big deal, man. I was, and it looked really good too. Uh, very fluid. I never thought about all that cyber. It's really interesting. Andre's like, you know, to look back at, at how much time has passed and how we've advanced technologically. It's like, wow, holy shit. Yeah. Um, but no, I mean, you know, honestly, um, again, I guess I understand maybe if this movie was overhyped back then. I didn't see it in the theater, so I wasn't cognizant of like what the what, people, what the reception was or the expectations were on the film. Um, these are all pretty much for the most part all actors and act young actors and actresses, aren't they? I mean, they're all in their like early twenties, I think, yeah. for the most part. So, I mean. I don't know why. Was Casper Van Dien being seen as like some big star or something at that point? Yes. Like a, a budding star? Is that what he was supposed to like? That that was the deal? Yep. Okay. All right. Um, You know, yeah. I mean, I, and I thought, I, like I said, I thought he, he serviced the film well. He carried the film pretty well as, as the central character or whatnot. Um, seeing, again, you know, Doogie Howser up in there um, was great. I, I, I actually liked how they used him. Um, what his abilities were and everything and whatnot. I liked the interaction he had with his um, was it his chinchilla or his um, what was that thing that he had? A ferret. Ferret that he had or whatever, and he could actually you know telepathically communicate with it or whatever. Um, that was interesting. I like that. Um, that they that they evolved like that, like the you know, and, and were able to you know to detect and figure out the people in the in the society that had that ability. Um. And so I liked it. I mean, maybe they could have given him more screen time, but he certainly had an impact on the film. Um, and it was good to see him. It was, and he was young back then. Um, but yeah, you're right about Amy Smart, Cyber. Holy shit, did she look young? I mean, she looked young, young. Um, I forgot she was even in the film. And yeah, yeah no, in general, I like the fact that um, Ryback does start off as a teacher, right? Um, and then he pops up later on, you know, we see what, you know, where he ends up and whatnot and everything. And he is a Lieutenant and all that. Um, and, and, you know, and then of course Rico is surprised at that point when that comes, I'm not trying to get ahead, but he's shocked. He's like, Oh shit. You know, that's my teacher. Right. Um, cause he wasn't pushing the military stuff heavily on the kids or anything like that. And whatnot. It wasn't like that. Like the father was trying to say, you know, if anything, he was kind of philosophical about it. And like very hard about like very tangible about it, like very realistic. Like, hey, you know, violence and war is necessary at times. Um, or whatever he said at one point, you know, when they talked about Hiroshima and Nagasaki or whatever in class. But um it was Patrick Muldoon that played Xander Barkalo that yeah. I enjoyed. He was good. I liked him. I liked him throughout, and he, he was good in this part too. Um Andres, you're right. I thought that Jake Busey was actually pretty pretty serviceable in this film. Um, him taking that knife was awesome. Uh, their ability to like to regenerate people's limbs and shit and whatnot, and like what they could do yeah. medically was really cool, right? Um, so yeah, it was really good. It was it was a great. I over the overall, uh, I didn't really think there were any lulls in the whole film. But it really all carries very well. Yeah, it moves very quickly. Yeah good pace it has good pace excellent thank you yes i agree it, it's a very very evenly placed film that keeps you entertained the whole time there's not really any lulls i feel during this film so most definitely so so we we kind of established there that you guys like think jake Busey was a great character uh, and uh, I have to agree there. I think he was a really fun character. I, I just really appreciate that scene where he's uh, after, you know, Denise Richards uh, dumps Rico, uh, and he, like, talks to him and says, you know, you, you're, you got here all on your own, and you're this stuff like that, and I think that really cements how great of a character Jake Busey is in this film with that sequence, and I think he did a really good job there, uh, you know, providing that. Um, so, yeah. be, uh, before we move on, what are your guys' thoughts on the aliens themselves? What do you think of the arachnids, their look and everything? Uh, and do you think that the CGI has still he held up to this day, 26 years later? Uh, starting with you, Andres. Sure. Um, so, 
Um, well, first off, I think the, the designs are really iconic. I think these are more, I mean, this is created by uh, the, the famed Robocop, uh, uh, was it uh, Bob, uh, Rob Mantini? Uh, these are incredible designs. I, I think the main arachnids that we see throughout the movie that are like the armies, the, the CGI there is really good. I think that they do a good job of showing in a CGI and then showing practical uh, animatronics from those creatures. They, it's really good there. Um, the the other bugs, particularly the like big beetle, those big beetles are you can tell those CGI. So I I cannot fault for the film. I think they're a little rough. Um, I mean it's actually really impressive because. The fact that we're seeing these creatures night and day is really impressive because you know the special effects people always told you when 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 you when you watch you know behind scenes stuff and docs, uh, you know they tell you that you know uh, uh, how you say uh, emanate these creatures during the day is really tough because of you know the shadows and all that. I think in this movie these. Uh, the CGI here looks really good during the day and night, and it's it's up there to like the Lost World dress part during that year, as well when we saw the dinosaurs during the night and day. Um, but yeah, so I, I think the the arachnids designs are, are amazing. They're iconic. I mean, it looks really good, uh, especially off CGI into practical animatronics. They look amazing. So I really appreciate these creatures. Excellent, Andres. Thank you. Jeff, your thoughts, sir, on the arachnids. How do you feel they hold up? What did you think about them? Do you think they're cool? Do you think they're awesome? Etc. Well, I think you're cool, Cyber. I thought, yes, yeah, sir. I don't. With your green screen whatnot and everything, I don't know what you're, what's going on. Yeah, you could have something, doing something on your own back there, whatever, whatnot. And I don't, I'm not insecure. But when we're sharing the space and whatnot, I'm like, I can't tell. I'm, I get I get a little bit, like, nervous that maybe I'm talking for too long or something or whatever, or I'm being, talking gibberish or whatever, being long-winded. That's all. Um, no, the arachnids, I mean, I don't know. Was it straight digital effects? Did they even use green screen back then at all? They, they do. It, it depends. Um, I'm just wondering. I didn't know. Did they even use – did they have – was any of that green screen effect? Yeah. It was. Okay. Yeah. So, like, but they were – the characters were the arachnids themselves were fully digital. Yes. No. Okay. So then, all right. That's what I was just trying to understand. Was just you know, no. Nah, I thought that um they look great. They did, uh for me anyway. I mean nowadays looking back at them now, I guess they're a little bit different. They're not quite as imposing, maybe as they were at that point. I mean like look, I've seen other stuff and other stuff and like look at the Mandalorian episode one with that alligator dinosaur fucking thing, man. Like that thing was crazy. Um, like, you know, uh, I've seen other stuff like that now, but back then, um, seeing some of those bugs and we will get into the bigger ones, right. Um, that come out of the ground and whatnot and everything, right. In the other battles, uh, like the more, like, you know, uh, the more sizable ones that are more dangerous, yeah. um, and have more abilities and whatnot. They're not like the grunts or whatever, like, you know, or whatever you want to call those, that one that we first deal with in the first, on that first planet. Um, I forget what they call it, uh, like Zandu or. Uh, I can't pronounce they, it. I they don't they don't like say any particular names for these bugs. They, they do. Just call them, oh they no! Do. Oh no! The plants. I'm sorry. The bugs. No, I don't think they do. Do they? Oh. Cyber. The they went to a particular planet at that time. No, the bugs. Do they actually distinct them? Do they do they classify them in any way or have them give them names? No. Oh no. no! No, it's it's always bugs or arachnids. That's it. Yes, That's it. which I and I think like I like that. That they could, that everyone like, uh, that, that they stick with the bug thing. I like that theme. No, they look good. They do. Um, I mean, honestly, there's stuff I've seen recently in like the last five or ten years that, that digital effects, um, that were worse than that. I think, uh, in terms of like you know, films like you know, like hey, I mean, look at Infinity War, right? Um, I'm not complaining about anything with Infinity War. I'm just saying that those stupid like uh, multi multi biped like um, creatures or whatever. That the Dark Order brought down to Wakanda, right? They were not yeah. exactly the most like interesting looking, fucking like ominous looking things, man. Like they were cool for a minute, and whatnot, and everything, but then they were kind of like, okay, 
you know, I miss the Centauri at that point. So I'm just saying, like, um, I've seen stuff recently that like was was the same level to me. Um, for me back then, I thought it was great. Um, and uh, you know, especially when we get farther in, the only thing about the um, the grunt type ones was the numbers of them. That was what that, that and their viciousness. That was what I found in posting about them and whatnot. And even now, the violence, the the blood, the gore, um, right, the severed limbs and shit and whatnot. You're not used to seeing that stuff anymore, right? It's the 90s. So, you know, got to love it, baby. Um, but no, uh, I thought they were really well done overall across the board and throughout the whole film. And um, if anything, um, you know, I think that they did a good job of not overdoing it with the amount that they did, right? Yeah. Who they, what they put out there out of the, they could have done like 20 different types of alien of the bugs if they wanted to in the movie, but they didn't do all that. They had like four or five and that was it. I thought that was a good move. True. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Awesome. All right. So, so moving on, so where we left off the flogging, as I, I mentioned before, uh, this is when they get uh, their first actual kind of military assignment after the flogging sequence. And uh, this is where uh, basically, uh, you know, Rico, uh, you know, gets thrown into the mix finally. And it, with everyone there, and uh, basically, uh, we have this giant action pack sequence where it shows with you know them taking on the bugs and stuff like that on their planet and stuff like that. And uh, like I said, uh, as I said at the beginning, this is the part where we actually it's we're finally back in the present time where we were at the beginning of the film, and this is where Rico gets badly wounded and a whole bunch of the soldiers because they, you know weren't 100% prepared with how many uh, bugs or, you know, these the arachnid enemies would be there are basically overpowered and almost destroyed all the all the infantry people. And so thankfully, because, you know, uh, Casper Van Dien's character, Rico, gets only, you know, really kind of hit in the leg, he kind of, you know, kind of survives and he's rescued by Resek. And uh, so then we basically go back, and he gets put into one of the Bakta tanks, like things, like I, like I feel that's what it kind of looked like, and uh, is basically you know healed, uh, like we saw earlier film when the guy got his arm broken uh, by Clancy Brown, and he has that like little device thing on his arm that's like filled with liquid. It's like basically healing it. So this is basically like the full body extent. Or if, like, if you're a fan of Empire Strikes Back, of course, that sequence where it shows uh, Luke in the Bakta tank getting healed from being uh, killed by the snow monster or being, just, you know, messed up by the snow monster character, which I forget what they're called in the film. <laughs> but anyways, so basically we get that sequence and uh, uh, he's basically healed and everything and uh, – we kind of get we go back and once again kind of have some more Denise Richards sequences where she's, you know, talking with Patrick Muldoon more and stuff like that. And they're doing their thing and stuff like that. And uh, that's when uh, basically, uh, you know, we find out that uh, an asteroid has been sent uh, by the Drachnids to destroy Buenos Aires, uh, Buenos Aires as, a, as it's called. And uh, we basically, uh, you know, f that's where uh, Rico's parents are. And he was just having kind of a voice message with them and everything like that. And uh, when all of a sudden there started being some blackout from the message and he lost contact. And so basically at this point, uh, you know, the next, you know, portion would be the, kind of like the final act of the film. And so we have kind of that in between part there where Rico resigns briefly before he goes back in a battle and he ends up, you know, re enlisting after realizing he's stupid for resigning at all. And, uh, you know, we have that kind of great sequence where he has that conversation with Dean Norris and Clancy Brown kind of, you know, steps in and says, Yeah, you know, I don't see no, no signature. And he like rips it up and stuff like that uh, as well. And, uh, Basically, yeah, he uh, it gets ready to be sent back, you know, into mission. 
And so uh, basically that's when we, we get to once again, them, uh, you know, basically being deployed uh, back to, you know, a particular portion of the planet to take on the bugs. Uh, what was, let's see, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so we do that. Uh, and, uh, basically they get sent to an outpost, uh, where there was uh, supposedly a whole bunch of military people there and they get there and it's basically desolate. It's been destroyed. It, it, there's definitely been attacks there. Um, and that's, you know, basically, uh, Rico ends up being a, coming a part of the roughnecks, which is Razak's uh, group that he has taken over as when he's come back to the military. And basically at that time, too, that's when Rico gets promoted again uh, to a higher level. He's a lieutenant at this point, lieutenant something um, by this point. And uh, Diane Myers is uh, with him, uh, Dez, and uh, Jake Busey as well. And basically this sequence, we get a whole bunch of action sequences. They're fighting up bugs. There's basically, we get to a point where one of the military guys gets like uh, sprayed with some sort of like fire acid and it burns off his arm. It's a chick, I think. Isn't it a woman? No, it's a guy. The guy, yeah. It melts away and whatnot and everything. Yeah, it's no, a no. guy. We, we saw it first with the, 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 one of the rub, the Rubnik's woman. Her arm got melted with the fire, and then we saw the two other ones getting fire in the post. So we, it happens three times. There well, anyways, happens. I'm talking about just the black guy. Uh, the black <laughs> guy gets his arm blo- uh, basically acided off. Yes. Um, yeah. So yeah. that that's a part of the action, the other people being acidified. I'm talking yeah. about a specific part. And, that, and uh, except for that was by the big fucking black beetle thing, right? That's when we get our first uh, look at one of the big bombers, as they're, I believe they're pretty much is what they are, because they have that ability to shoot up uh, stuff into the atmosphere with their giant asses. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yep. So basically one of those comes crawling up out of the ground, and they basically, Casper Van Dien, uh, or Johnny Rico gets on top of it and like starts punching a hole into it, throws a bomb in it, and explodes it which is really awesome. And so after that's killed, uh, and that's like kind of their first incursion with one of these big beetle things, um, once they go into the compound at this point, and they're looking around and stuff like that and see that they, you know, basically they tunneled their way in and killed all the people. Uh, basically, there's only one survivor we find out uh, that's left of the base. They start noticing weird things going on at, you know, versus, you know, previous times they've had to deal with bugs and so forth and like that. And they started noticing that there's holes in people's heads. And they don't know why there's holes in these people's head, but basically they, they figure out like, oh, it looks like they're sucking their brains out or something. So this is really weird. And so while they're there, that's when, uh, you know, basically the, a whole bunch of the bugs come in and end up, uh, you know, battling again and have them battle with them. And uh, th- there's all of a sudden like a s- giant swarm, like there's got to be thousands of them flourishing into this, uh, you know, uh compound and they're battling them off and they got the big gun riggers up there and they're shooting stuff like that and they just keep shooting them and killing them and trying to you know stop them be- while they're waiting for a transport to come and get them and so at this point you know they're like battling them stuff like that and that's when unfortunately Rez- Rezac ends up getting killed uh and he basically uh, Johnny Rico uh does a mercy kill and uh Hold on one second, guys. Uh oh. Andre, you know what that means, baby? What? Massage parlor time. No, no. Oh, uh, no, anyway. no. Go, no, no. Hey, seriously, though, Andres, the whole thing with those fucking, uh, those big bugs. Yeah. Being able to hurl those energy blasts, or the hell they were. Yeah. Through space, right? And yeah. hit other planets and shit, whatnot. That just like look at as a, watching that as a kid, you don't grasp the gravity of all that, and like the yeah. like you know what I'm saying. It's like okay, that's cool. Now that I'm an adult, like I'm 40, I'm like holy fuck. Like yeah, these are like these are like insects, like insectoid alien creatures, right? You know, yeah. like like they have some like obviously Cyber was talking about how now you know they have they set up the trap, like yeah, you know, for that, them at the base, right? So they are intelligent. They have like, they are, the media, the media person was right. The woman was right with the dude where she's like, 
I I bet there's I guarantee there's a higher intelligence in the bug, you know, whatever deal. Right. So let me ask you a question now. When the first Halo game comes out, and that's on Xbox, a couple of years after this movie comes out, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, all good. All good. Just had to help with something. Anyways. Anyways, uh, so yeah, so basically we have more of an action sequence going on and fun and stuff like that going on here. Uh, basically at this point, that's when unfortunately Des gets killed. Uh, we see her get stabbed and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, uh, you know, we're like, I, I remember the first time watching that and going, no, how can you kill Diane Myers? I'm like, hell no. Why'd you do that to me? And, uh, I re- and then rewatching it today, I was like, oh yeah, I forgot they did that. I'm like, damn it. I'm like, God damn it. And uh, so, like, then we, we he has to deal with that after finally we had br- – previously before that, they finally got together. We had a l- little sex scene with them. Yeah. And uh, and so uh, it, that was kind of funny, too, how that inspired. I love it where Michael Ironside comes. He's like, uh, we're going out in, like, 10 minutes and stuff like that. And he's like – Make it 20. Like, he's she's like, Who, who's that? And then all of a sudden she put, it's like, oh, it's me. And then she's like – Oh, he's like, make that 20. And, I'm like, and that cracked me up. I'm like, that was yeah, hilarious. Yeah. And um, and so then it's like, you know, after, you know, she's there dying in his hands and stuff like that while they're on the, the carrier. And uh, she basically finally, you know, ends up dying. And he's like all distraught. And, of course, Denise Richards is back in the picture again because she's on the ship. She's flying it along with Patrick Muldoon. And uh, so we basically get kind of like that little scene there where they're going off. And, um, so, uh, after the, all of them get onto the carrier, they, they take them to a specific place to get them out of there. And, uh, basically then, uh, it goes from there. Um, we have that happen. Uh, and basically we, uh, you know, we go into the final chapter of the film. So before we move on to that, let's talk a little bit about that little sequence there, that sequence of that action packed action going on what is everyone's thoughts on that whole sequence there of all that action that goes on leading up to basically their escape uh from the compound uh starting with you andreas sure uh this again this is uh all great i mean the pacing is like still doing good so that's great we're getting great character moments from each of our characters that we're following particular carmen uh uh rico and uh you know ds uh uh Yes, right. The Daya, or her, 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 her uh, too many D names. Sorry, um, Daisy. Yeah, Daisy. Yeah, yeah. Well, whatever. Uh, uh, Diane Myers character. Let me just just go to that name. Um, <laughs> sorry, folks. Uh, but yeah. So I mean, this whole sequence is really great. I mean, I was so happy that Michael Ironside was in more of this film because you think. That he's gonna be just a cameo in the beginning, so I like that he's in this part, and I like the reveal that he's like in the the army. I I I like his robotic arm, which is cool. Um, but yeah, it, it's really great, and you know, setting up the the you know, the um this sequence sets up a lot of what we're gonna see later in the finale. That the bugs are very smart. So the fact with the compound, like it's really impressive that these arachnids and slash bugs can do this, and so it sets up a lot of the stakes uh, for the the main heroes. Um, uh, I guess uh, you know uh, this is where you know Johnny Rico really becomes a great character. Like the fact that he's very smart and knows what he's doing. Uh, like you know, as um, Goosey's character say, like you've got a long way to be here. Uh, in this, you know, uh, military position. And so, he, like, he, you know, Johnny is continuing to show off that he's very open-minded and very, you know, hit smart of what he's doing. So that's good. Um, uh, yeah, and the camp out is incredible because not only you see, uh, you know, before they escape, you know, the uh, you, you have the, the funny general that he just completely is lost it like he's so afraid he wants to get out of there 
and it's just he's a very funny you know minor character that gets killed off like so i'm a, like he gets killed off so funny you know uh, it uh, during the, the escape compound uh but yeah so and of course um the the damn manners character dying was so shocking i mean her death was so brutal and i, I think it helps to make uh johnny's like descent to like seriousness and like 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 jaded as a person in war makes a lot of sense you know as we've seen with a lot of war movies and all that and also these sequence reminds me of aliens uh the the james cameron aliens like you see how the aliens are you know these bugs and arachnids are like very smart and they're like out smarting the humans here so it's it's another cool uh war sci-fi film where you're seeing the creatures are more smarter than the the humans were watching so that's really impressive um when did, when did james cameron direct the aliens films uh 86 1986 oh, so the, okay yeah and and i i was because i you know the fact that this movie is, is like commenting that you know these bugs are eight, very smart it's kind of cool that we have another war movie that's using this again so that's the great part about these sequences you're seeing these bugs outsmarting these soldiers you know uh but in a different way you know than what the city morphs the city morphs are doing in aliens um but yeah so i really love the sequence um and when i don't want to jump too far but after the compound that's where we meet again uh, neil patrick harris's character which is great and uh you know so, but overall, great sequence. Uh, I I love uh, Johnny's re uh, reply to Arisai saying, "You have twenty minutes," and he say, "Can we do it? Can we do it in twenty minutes?" And they like, "Yeah." <laughs> and that's one of my funniest uh, scenes from this movie. It's, it's hilarious. Anyway, great overall. Not for real, because I mean, let's be honest, most dudes out there are lucky if they can last for twenty seconds. For 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Excellent, sir. Thank you. Uh, Jeff, same question, sir. Andres, good points as always, sir. Very good tonight on the panel. Killing it. Killing it, my friend. Steal my thunder. Uh, Tex, good point. Seth Gilliam is in the film. There's a lot. There, yeah, most definitely. The Wire is really good. And uh, so is yeah. Walking Dead. The Wire is great. I can tell you, I noticed before in the past text that you that you like the HBO Studios series, which I, I would have liked to have actually heard more from you on The Last of Us. I know you that, that uh, you know that I really enjoyed that shit. I, I think pretty much everybody did for the most part. Um, yeah, so Seth, you, Seth, was, Seth, Seth was in this movie. Yeah, I, I recognize him. Yep, I was yep. like, yep. So just young. Out. Yeah, just young. No, I was just like, I was thinking like kind of like the um, the Dizzy, the Desi, uh, Dizzy, I think her name is right. Her actual name is um, is Dizzy Flores. Um, when Dizzy dies, it was reminiscent to me of like in uh, in Hawkeye when Echo's father dies, and like you know, I, and I was in the podcast of Champions. It was my turn to talk, and I was like, um, my, and I was like, I was thinking of that situation that you know, as the father's dying and he reaches out to Echo's face and and, and touches her, he should have been like, he should have grabbed her titty. They've been like, give me one last titty, whatever you know. I was hoping Des would do that with uh with Johnny Rico, like you know, like just play with my titties one more time, Johnny, before your girlfriend shows up and gets jealous or whatever, whatnot, you know. Um, but either way, no. Uh, the 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 like, it's sort of like you have to kind of figure that the alien, if they're capable of, if they have some of their uh the these alien bugs that can actually hurl energy blasts and shit, whatnot through space. Planetary from planet to planet, there has to be some kind of intelligent. Um, I don't know, like it, I'm telling you, I almost get like Halo vibes from this a little bit. Looking back now, I see tropes in this. Uh, maybe they're just tropes that are a part of sci fi. I don't know, but like mm -hmm. I see stuff in this that very much reminds me of Halo, right? You know, because Halo had like that higher intelligent, more race, right? You know, that kind of ran the show. Um, so. I always kind of figured that they would have to have some kind of like, um, I don't know, like a uh, leadership group that would be small that would have the ability to like think intelligently and whatnot and everything. 
um, when they sucked out the brains and shit, whatnot, and all that cyber, um, what were they trying to do with that? Were they trying to like, um, uh, reanimate them or something like that or whatever, and like talk, like use the use their voices and stuff? No, no. Yeah. they were trying to get knowledge. Oh, yeah. learn, learn by sucking out the. Okay, I got it. Okay. Yeah. That's weird. I could have sworn I heard Tiffy. Oh, it's Tiffy out the frick, at the freaking door. That's where she is. I've heard Tiffy in a while. Cyber, I, I kind of threw me off for a minute there for a minute. No, but um, the Denny's Richards coming in and whatnot, right? With her, you know, like coming in because she's like the hot rod in the film, right? Like with her flying and everything. The um, the only time I really liked any of the planetary the the ship stuff. Right, because there is no real like ship on ship type stuff. Um, was seeing the 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 like the um the whole um, uh, armada, right? When they first come at that first planet, and they lose a hundred thousand people or whatever in an hour or whatever, whatnot. And you see them all together, these big ass ships. That was very Halo esque for me too, right? In a way, um, and I thought that was cool. And then seeing the um those energy blast deals, or whatever, coming out. Past them and whatnot, and everything that was that was pretty dope, but yeah, no, I mean honestly, Andre, I think you, Andre, you called it. Like, I don't know what you think, Cyber, but I, I don't think I ever saw Denise Richards in anything ever before, other than this in any other films after, where she actually played such an interesting kind of serious character that wasn't like just with her like in a bathing suit. No, 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 I mean, no, because she was like the different. no, she was like the um. She was the uh, sort of like the um, uh, the the, trying to think of, girl, the, the, the girl that uh, what's her name that plays Bo Katan and did Mandalorian when she was in uh, Battle Star Galactica, uh, the Starbuck, uh, Kitty Sackoff, yeah, Kitty Sackoff, Sack Sack the Starbuck, you know, that was her deal on 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 uh, you know, on that show was that she was like the uh, the headhunter out of all the different pilots, and whatnot, right? She was like the most skilled, um, yeah, you know, and so. I thought it was cool to see her in that in that role like that and everything and whatnot and being like the one that, that was scared of everybody or that when she would fly. And she was the one that like, you know, managed to land in there and whatnot and everything and save everybody. And um that was well acted, I thought. Like uh, you know, Casper Van D did a great job kind of like expressing like surprise, yet also being respect, like being like impressed, yeah. right? At like her I guess her steel, you know what I mean? Like her, like, you know, her, like, valor and, like, her, her ability or talent to fly and whatnot and everything, her balls. Um, that was well done, I thought, right? Um, and um, you mentioned uh, Andre's about when we actually kind of – it's not that we hadn't seen, uh, uh, you know, um, Neil Patrick's character really at that point. It's that at this point he's actually been through his training and whatnot and everything, and he's actually moved up like way up in the hierarchy and he has power now. So he's like a shot caller and shit and whatnot. He actually has influence. And yeah. that's like, it's, it's, it's very different. Um, right. And so, um, no, I think that, uh, the, um, the only thing about the only thing for me about the whole, the whole siege scene with the trap and everything and whatnot, and them getting overwhelmed was it just, just that at that point, the whole, um, deal where I was, you're right. The guns look good. Back, now and back then they look good they, it, they had to be standardized for everybody before they did with them the, it was basically like a space age m16 they yeah. look good um but and they, and they look like grunts it, you know it, like you said cyber they look like a, they look like grunts with like you know a machine gun like a regular basic military weapon this uniform i felt like at that point where they just you know like um oh, okay we lost cyber no i felt like yeah, um no. No, I felt like the whole the whole trope of just having them overwhelm them with sheer numbers, right? It yeah. got played out a little bit, right? It was not like, you know, because at that point, right? I mean, you've just got basically like all these soldiers, all these actors and actresses just shooting at fucking nothing in real life. We know that, right? Like, seriously. in When they're acting this out, they're just shooting a freaking gun with blanks or whatever, and there's nothing there. Yeah. So, like, do you ever um, think about that when they're acting? Like, that's what they're doing? I mean, it was fine. I mean, it, I, I guess. No, but you like, see what I'm saying? How it gets boring. That trope gets boring. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know. Well, I, I, it's kind of weird because why can the bugs can, like, go over? You know, like, like 
you know, because they could climb fast. It's well, like, they're like, oh, because they're like, um, they're very uh, quick. And like, they're, it's, uh, like they, that's the thing. They never really, when we see Klandethu, right? Again, all we ever see them do is like overwhelm the, the human being, the human soldiers, right? Yeah. Um, and that's why they start doing, remember that's, and that's when they start, that's when they mention, I think it's uh, Rico mentions uh, glassing. Right, they're glassing the planets first to like yeah. wipe out some of the fucking, you know, those fucking, you know, uh, hordes of those fucking things, right? Those one insects. Yeah, um, they're, grunts. they're grunts. They're basically grunts, right? From Halo. That's all. This is, but honestly, I, I'm telling you, like, I think Halo took a lot from this. I think they did. Looking back well, at it now. Well, for me, I haven't played Halo, so I, I'm not really. You know, Andre, with the history or universe. I haven't watched all the. I haven't read all the novels. My brother bought had them. He was a Halo fan. Oh, I yeah? played like I played three of the games, but I read like four of the novels. They're really good, man. I know you like to read. But if you like, if you like science fiction reading that has like really good writing and whatnot, and everything right, and is like suspenseful and also has like uh, character depth and like mm -hmm. some romantic adult themes too like from a sexual standpoint right humor right mm -hmm. you know what i mean like you know drama too all all in there yeah. this is they give it to you right and that's i think that's why um like for instance folks if you go and check out um hey what's going on there uh Emil kamar um that's why I think if you like honestly, um, uh, like if we we only got through through Halo episode, I think four maybe, and then we stopped reviewing it, whatnot, and everything. No, because Ms. Marvel came out, right? Oh, yeah. So we had to review that, right? And that was worth it, man. Ms. I thought yeah, I already told you before. I thought Ms. Marvel was the best Disney Plus series that came out last year, yeah. and I called it too. I did. I called it, right? On multiple shows, I called it like way before that. I was like, yeah, I think Ms. Marvel's gonna be good. I just totally, I just totally blew it on She-Hulk, man. You know? Oh, please. That's no, I, I thought it was going to be the best, I thought it was going to be the best Disney Plus series that came out that year. Yeah. Last year I did. I thought, well, but whatever. No, I'm telling you, um, if you ever, if you ever have an opportunity or you ever want to try them out or you get, you know, if you ever want to get them used or something, the Halo novels are not, are not too thick, right? They're pretty condensed. They're pretty, you know, compact. Um, and, um, they're really well written. They're really good. If you like space thriller, kind of like, there's a lot of ship on ship battling, but it's done in like a militaristic way, like a Navy way. Yeah. Because in, in the Halo verse, they call, um, uh, you know, uh, planetary warfare and space battling and space, space faring. That's mm -hmm. the Navy. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's how they refer to it. Right. Yeah. And there's a lot of really good stuff like that. Um, but either way though, no, I just felt like. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Andres. No, um, you know, you're speaking about spaceships. I mean, this movie had one of the greatest spaceships. Like, they look really real, and uh, those are one of my favorite sequences. Uh, you know, we don't get, you know, as you say, Jeff. You know, on a one-on-one, -on -one you know, battleships against one another. But like, it's really cool to see them operating, like, you know, through meteors and and those like. Oh yeah, you know, energy like, blasts. Yeah, like it's it's really cool how they they operate in a very like a very realistic way when you when you're in space. So it's it's really cool. Um, no, I agree. Uh, I mean, a lot of sci-fi always depicts you know these these things to be very military militaristic. You know, uh, you know, with the ships and the, and then the way the grunts are. You know, it's the same thing with aliens. You know, you see that is similar but differently operated because. You know the in aliens, the 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 colonial marines are owned by the what the uh, what's the company's name? The Watani uh, company. Uh, so they, yes, they Watani work. company. Yep. So you know, so and I don't know about the the military in Halo. I don't know if they're they run by the company or something like that. No, no, it's it, it's 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 a little bit different trope because again in Halo. Mm -hmm. It is, it is the same kind of deal in that, and they don't display this in the series. That was kind of the problem, one of the problems. Some of us that, that did read the novels or whatever and did play the games that we did, what we didn't like was yeah. that it's very much like this, 
in this film, where in the in the Halo books and whatnot, and in the games, the human race is at war, full blown at war with like a, the alien race of the Covenant. It's full on right. out like war, right? You know, like consigning people and shit to the military and whatnot and everything, right? Like t- like type shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like like that, like like dire. Which I think is a trope that they kind of right cyber they infuse that into that with the citizenry thing and whatnot. That's that there is some like a little bit of um patriotism that you see, right? It, right from Johnny Rico there in the beginning. There almost is like a sense of, to him that he, like he should he should have to do his duty. Well, yeah, citizenship offers a whole bunch of opportunities, and that's why the people do it. Yeah. That's right. No, that's- and, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, they, that's but, what but, the grunts were talked about in the showers. Like they, they all join because it gives them benefits. Oh that. yeah, yep. The, the the shit says she could have babies. Yep. Right, I could have. Yep. Yep. There you go. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Apparently, um, somehow, I, I don't know how this is even possible, but um, when you take um men and put them in prison with women, they get pregnant. The, the you know the men that say they're women they get the women pregnant it's magical anyway cyber very good chef that very very good observation about yeah the prison system sir yeah yeah good job but they're women oh. very true anyway so yeah thanks awesome yeah uh, uh, wi-fi glitches people out there wi-fi glitches gotta love it when it decides i'm just gonna cut out for no apparent reason Good old times, good old times, you know. But anyway, so uh, basically coming to the last portion of this film. So after the rescue uh, from the, uh, uh, you know, from the base and they go back. uh, Basically, that's when we're reintroduced to Jenkins, played by Neil Patrick Harris. And he basically uh, has, you know, tells that he's now a high-ranking colonel. Uh, and that the rough, roughnecks were deliberately set into a trap, uh, and that you know they it was they did this to justify sending them in to find the find and prove the existence of a, a one of the arachnids being a brain bug. So there is one of the creatures has a name. It's called the brain bug. Brain bug. And so uh, basically, they basically sent them in to try to figure out if this is a real thing, and that you know the brain bug is really kind of like the main. Uh, bug that is controlling all the other bugs and that they sent them in basically on a suicide mission. Uh, so after, you know, after he, you know, he finds that out, uh, Johnny, uh, basically then he's bestowed with uh, a higher ranking and is, is basically sent back on the field to go to uh, back to P to capture the brain bug. So at this, we once again, go back into battle. Uh, and uh, that's when Carmen and Patrick Muldoon's character are back on their ship, and basically it's attacked by the Ragnids and is destroyed. They flee in a one of the little uh, escape pods and uh, making their way down and end up crashing into the cavern where the bugs are. Uh, while they're in there, uh, basically uh, we're introduced to the, the brain bug, which... Uh, as was told to me earlier, basically the face of the brain bug looks like a vagina. And uh, it, 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 pretty funnily, it, I, I would agree. It, it does kind of look like a vagina, kind of. And uh, what's, I was, what's a vagina, Cyber? Uh, uh, the female uh, anatomy part, sir. How would you know about all about that, son? Are uh, you I really do, young for all that? I know a lot about it, sir. Uh, okay. and, and And you are the son here. Anyways, so uh, I am uh, – so basically we were introduced to that bug, and out, out of its mouth or whatever it's supposed to – the hole that's in the face uh, comes out this little – Hot D. Attachment thing. Uh, not a hot D, but an attachment, like a, like a little probe comes out of its mouth or whatever that is considered. And uh, basically is shoved into Patrick Muldoon's head. And his brains are extracted through this appendage from the brain bug. And basically, you know, as we had saw earlier in the film, that's what happened to a few of the pe- guys at the, the compound. And so, uh, so basically at this point, you know, uh, it's about to do it to uh, Denise Richards' character. And that's when a uh, Casper Benin shows up with his 
group, Jake Busey, Watkins, and stuff like that, uh, to put the bugs at bay and to save her. And so they basically are throw in like a, a grenade and uh, cause a like kind of a nuclear explosion to happen in there to kind of get rid of some of the bugs. And uh, while that's happening, that's when the brain bug flees. And um, so basically they end up, you know, they start trying to fight their way out. And that's when Watkins, unfortunately, uh, gets injured and decides to sacrifice himself to allow them to get away. And so he basically th plants another bomb and, and you know, uh, sacrifices himself to let them get away. So after they get out of there, they are joined by a whole bunch more of the, the Marines. And they find out that uh, Grimm, or him, Kim, 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 what's his name? Uh, Clancy Brown's character uh, has captured the brain bug while it was fleeing. And so basically that's when uh, Jenkins shows back up, Neil Patrick Carrick's character, and he walks over to it and does his mind thing on it and uh, basically realizes that it's afraid, meaning that they have – that basically they have the upper hand now by capturing this brain bug. So then basically they all kind of celebrate there. They're all happy. And because Danny wins three medals at the Special Olympics, uh, I guess, because of this. And uh, so basically then they kind of all cheer and then that's when it goes to like those infomercials again to end the film. And basically it shows them kind of uh, experimenting on the brain bug. You can see the brain bugs kind of frightened and all that kind of good stuff. And basically that's how the film ends. So what did you guys think about the final portion of this film, that action – the the bug carnage, the brain bug, and all that kind of cool stuff. Starting with you, Andres. Uh, yeah, this was great. I mean, the reveal of the brain bug was really spectacular. This is where the practical effects really was really good, especially when we get it very close to the face of the brain bug. That looks really like nasty, but looks really. Oh yeah, good. that thing was fucking nasty looking. Yeah. So, but man, when that thing sticks whatever that's coming out from the face to uh, uh, Patrick Verdun's head. It's really disgusting. But, and, and the effects there was really good. So um, and, and, and uh, this whole sequence is amazing. And again, th this is, uh, is a huge payoff of what we saw in the beginning where we saw uh, Rico you know, being tested with um, Neil Patrick Harris' character, uh, you know, doing – the, the mind trick and like learning to like it, it was basically um luke skywalker like uh believe in the force kind of thing and, and you saw that with rico where he believed that uh carmen was not dead and you know uh, because we we know that the patrick harris character is psychic so it's a little hint that she he's like heading his friends to this you know location like like this direction of capturing the brain uh, uh, brain, uh, brain bug, uh, throughout the film. You know, uh, it, it's it's very subtle, which I like uh, in the film. Uh, but yeah, so I was very sad that the the character Sugar uh, Walkins died. Like, but it was a great honor death that he did. Like, I mean, that's where you know, you know, every soldier had to do is save the friend. So I really like that. Um, yeah, and then. Uh, you know, of course, um, you know, the whole wrapping of the, the, the film is, you know, pretty, pretty much neatly wrapped up and tied in a bowl. I, I didn't uh, touch on the commercial uh, tie-ins that they do here. Like, they're all good. Like, I really like that. Like, that's something that we do in the internet. Like, we always click on these videos that we like or, like, you know, these things like propaganda or all that, like, it's pretty accurate what we do in the internet. And I think that's one of the highlights about the Starship Troopers is their, their in commercials are pretty accurate today's you know, technology and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I, I, and this is where the music is really great. I mean, the, the music by uh, 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 Purcell, you know, is, is really awesome. And this is where the, the military, uh, 
March. It's, it's really awesome here towards the end of the film, which is great. Um, but, but yeah, especially in the end credits, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, so overall, I love this movie. It's really like, it's so immanagable of the storytelling, which is great. And you see the characters involved throughout the film, which is great because you don't see that a lot in films, especially in sci-fi films. So it's great to see our main three characters from where they began and where we end them, they have completely changed throughout the film, which is really great. And it's, it's earned, which is good. So yeah, overall the third act is, the third and final act of this movie is amazing, it's awesome. Just like the first two acts, as always, it's top-notch sci-fi action. I mean, it's, it's awesome. Excellent, thank you. Jeff, your thoughts, sir? Well, um, Cyber, if you haven't noticed, I wore this for you, brother, because we talked about Savage Plunkins during our trip to Rockville, the Tony Beach brother, where we became father and son united, um, right? At the crack at the crack house, uh, after at the at the free at the free crack party, all like crack party hotel that we stayed at. Um, we talked about Smashing Plunkins. Well, there you go, Melancholy the Infinite Sadness, baby. Anyway, Cyber, uh, no, uh, you know what? Um, good movie. Um, great ending, I thought. Very well done overall. Um, you know, again, I, I guess, you know, looking back now, in retrospect, I can see why maybe this, this film was sort of um, not so well received or whatever, or people weren't very happy with what they got with it. But again, um, you asked and prefaced right from jump, you know, what were, the, what were our first thoughts when we saw it the first time? Well, again, based off of me being 14 years old, right, and kind of like young and immature and naive, I thought it was outstanding. I didn't think, I mean, I, I had seen better acting in better films, right? Um, I'd seen um, Dances with a Wolf or whatever, like Alan says. Um, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, shit like that. But no, um, I thought it was really good. And it was good to, this time watching it too. This first time I've watched it probably in I think maybe like 16, 17 years. So I liked it. Uh, I forgot some of the stuff in it. Um, you know, uh, and um, yeah, overall, really well done. Um, I think that um, if anything, there's just so much shit in it that they've never been able to do now. So much, man. And this, they never could do it. The flogging with Rico, never. They could never pull that off now. Right? Or get away with that right, at all. So, um, um, I mean, you can, but in the, like, you have to be very smart with the sci fi stuff. I mean, uh, I don't know about all, all that. No, nah. it seems to change a lot between now and then. But either way, yeah. Um, it's a very authentic film. It's very, very. I mean, it's he. You know, the director does a really good job of of playing out authentically what he wants to put out with the movie. I thought, right? But what he wanted to deliver, he did it. It you know, like he did it the right way in his own way. Um, and what so he presented what he wanted, and he did a good job with it. I thought. Um, and um, hey, you know, um. Way to get a lot out of like these young act these these were mostly young actors and actresses. And if you look back at it now, if, I mean, you know more than I would, Cyber, as far as like how these all these people, all these actors and actresses did overall. But Jake, I never saw Jake Busey in anything like this ever again, where he was this good, really all that much. Um, and that uh, that actress that plays Desi, Dizzy, um. Well, I mean, I saw her in a couple things, but she was never really, like, had that big of a role in anything I ever saw again. At least me. Maybe maybe one other film. Um, but um, overall, I thought that, like, um, that Michael Ironside as, uh, you know, as the lieutenant, as Resnick, has just some of the best lines in the film. Like, all the stuff he says, right? Here's the beer. Here's the entertainment. Have fun. That's an order. You know? Yeah. Right? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, um, I only have one rule. You know, um, everybody fights, nobody quits or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Or I'll kill you myself. You know, I was like, fuck yeah, man. Hell yeah. It was dope as shit. Um, so, no, overall, really good. Well, well done. Um, the whole thing with, uh, I don't, I mean, the, some of that shit's dark, man. Some of that humor and whatnot in this movie at the end, when they, when they treat that, that fucking brain alien is, like, really sadistic. 
You know, it is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When they had the little kids stomping on the bugs and shit, right? Or, and the commercial and that. Yeah. Or yeah. The, was it or the part where, you know, uh, I think Rico's father mentioned how the school is like a recruitment for all the the soldiers. You know, it, I think you no. I think he was talking of the about the lieutenant. Yeah, well, I mean, in general, like how like society uses. Oh you know, yeah, you know, like like it, it's very dark humor, like because it, it's very true, you know, and that's the yeah. Thing. I'd have to be able to go back to that time period to really understand some of the tropes in this and whatnot and everything, right? And I really can't. It's hard for me to look back like that. Overall, good movie. Um, I enjoyed watching it. Hey, you know what? It was good. It really was. Um, it's entertaining, right? And hey, being entertained is always good. Um, you know, so I was happy with it. And, um, I mean, you know, uh, honestly, um, the, like I said, the bugs were great. They really did Co them come out of the ground and shit. Whatnot, everything was dope. They were killing it, man. And that scene where fucking Rico got on top of that bug and shit and dropped that grenade up in that motherfucker. Like you said, cyber, that shit was really cool when I was younger. And I saw that I was like, yo, that's dope. Like that's exactly what you have to do to do that shit. That was pretty well shot too. I thought that he, him hanging on there and all that shit. It looked pretty legit. So yeah. you know, it did. Yeah, yeah really good effect. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, the only thing would have been better is if they would have had the um, "Catch Me Outside" chick in there somewhere in the film, right? You know what I'm saying? Sure thing. From Doctor Phil. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Anyway, I, I I give I give it a I give it a a nine point five. Andres, your ranking, sir. 10. 10 out of 10. I give it a solid 10 as well. What? What? Oh, man. Love this movie. Holy Great fuck. movie. That's a lot, that's a lot of uh, unanimity there, folks. Fuck for the fucking bleeding edge. So, yeah. Great movie, folks. If you have not seen it, I highly recommend go check it out. Uh, you can find it streaming. You can go buy it on 4K, on Blu-ray, on DVD. Uh, you probably could even go find it somewhere in a thrift store on VHS still. So, yeah, definitely, definitely check it out, people. It's it's worth the watch. A really great film. Uh, great cast, great story, great directing by Paul Verhoeven. All around, just a really fantastic film. Uh, and, yeah, that is our Starship Troopers review, folks. And uh, as, as we all know, this was Jeff's pick for this week, just FYI. So he chose this so you can thank him for choosing this for you guys to for it being reviewed so you guys can rock him out and uh, let him know how awesome he is for uh, bringing us this awesome film so yeah Cyber, what do we got we have desperate measures this friday right yes and then what what comes up to that is it tropic thunder uh, i don't remember it is yeah you have it in your book i do i have it in the book and yes, Andre, you'll get to pick one, brother. You're due. You've you, you've done enough shows. You get to do one. No worries. Um, I, I just I just want to be in Trump of Thunder, so that's the big thing. Oh, brother, you can't be on Trump of Thunder. No what? No way, man. You'll I talk. Do. You'll you'll talk too much, brother. No, I'll be less gross, man. Just cursing so many times. Ah, uh, <laughs> who wouldn't want to be on Trump of Thunder? Anyways. Simon, great job, my friend. I'm sorry you have Wi-Fi issues, brother. I know, that, I know how frustrating that shit is. It is what it is. It, it's technology for you guys. Yeah, but you pay for it, and it's supposed to work. So, you know, there you go. But no, Andre's brother, we appreciate you, man. Of course, you can be on Tropic Thunder, man. We got you, bro. It's almost Secret Invasion time, baby. That's that's Secret Invasion doesn't come out in towards the end of June. I, I, we still got three weeks. It's closed. Three, three weeks. weeks. That's right. Three weeks. That's right. All right. Just just get used to him talking about it every ep everything we're on. I I'm, 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 I miss I miss Marvel, man. I miss covering Disney Marvel Disney Plus shows. That's true. It's been a while since. Oh my God, since She Hulk, right? That was like our last this like our Disney Plus shows. Yeah. Last August. Yeah. Well, let's do Cal, um, Groot. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am Groot. Andres, where's your fucking plugs, baby? In the private chat, man, you're, you're, you're being you're being sloppy tonight, bro. What's up? Mm-hmm. 
I just post it now. Okay. I'm pull up <laughs> I'm pulling cyber up right now. All right. And I got a uh, I've got a surprise for you, Cyber. I hate surprises. You love this one, man. Oh no, please no surprise. It's not merch yet, but I made our first custom t shirt of fucking um don't be ninja, nobody. Don't need be ninja. Just so we can get a look at it and see what it looks like, right? What? I made a custom t-shirt before we do any merch of, of like some of our shit. Like the guy that says, don't be ninja, nobody. Don't need no ninja. Oh, from, oh, uh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. From Judy Chop, Judy Chop guy. <laughs> Fucking A, bro. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was just surprised you would just wear it on the show. Oh, there you go. Yeah. But, that, you, but you hate surprises, though. So I was like, fuck, I might as well tell him. Anyways, uh, folks out there. So, yeah, if you enjoy me here on the Bleeding Edge, MCU's Bleeding Edge, you can find me under Cyberpunk Shark underneath uh, YouTube, TikTok, Rizzle, Facebook, Instagram. If Jeff can get shit together. And, uh, yeah, you can uh, you can definitely go check out that awesome awesomeness over there. Uh, I will be having my Fast X review up shortly. I already did my mini review of Fast X, so definitely go check that out. I'm up to 661 subscribers. We're getting closer to 700, so you guys are rocking it as usual. You guys, uh, you know, guys just rocking it. Thank you for uh, subscribing, and uh, you guys are awesome. Be having more stuff coming up soon. Uh, not sure. Peter Pan and Wendy review coming soon as well. Uh, a Dune Part 2 trailer reaction as well. And uh, more to come. Of course, uh, we have several movies coming up within the next uh, several weeks now. Uh, next week, we'll be having uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse Part 1. So we'll be seeing a review of that coming soon. Transformers Rise of the Beast, the following week. Uh, then, of course, the rest of the month, we have also Indiana Jones and all that kind of cool stuff. So uh, keep your eyes out for that stuff, too, as well. So you guys are rocking it. So let's get me to that Magic 1000. Get me to that Magic 700. We can do it. You guys are rocking. Let's not allow Jeff to have to do a uh, hand job. So, yeah, let's do it. Blow jobs. Remember, blow jobs. Yep. Yep. Random blow jobs. Yep. Oh, Just to get subscribers. That's right. And there has to be, they, have to be, they have to be diverse, too, Andres. There has to be inclusivity involved. So, I can't just suck white dick. Right? Okay. That's you right. Just, you can do that on Ghost, like the Shining. I mean, hey, it's all good, brother. It's all good. Hey, Cyber, it's not going to come to that, brother. I promise. You know why? Because I'm telling you right now, man. I am, um, like, seriously, folks. I have to apologize to Cyber and to Andres. These are really, they're really great, very patient guys to work with. Because honestly, um, with my, when it's ever since I got my new MacBook Pro. Every single time I've tried to do any kind of trailer reaction with them, whatever, I fucked them all up. All of them. They're just like, the, the audio's garbage, the video's garbage and whatnot, right? And so it's a, it's a pain in the butt, right? You know, to make the reaction videos and whatnot, the trailer reactions and not be able to put them out. Um, so I feel bad. Like, me and Cyber did do, and I couldn't even put it out because it was so, the video was so bad. It, and, 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 you know, Cyber probably saw it and didn't even tell me that it was freezing up and whatnot and all that shit. I didn't even notice it on my end. I, you didn't, did you notice it, Cyber? No. No, You're fine. It came out like that though when I watched it. It did all chopped up. That's all right though. I know what to do now. I think to figure it out, whatnot. I've got Apple support and all that, so I'll get, I'll get it worked out. And Andres, for the seventeenth time, we'll try for uh, the the Blue Beetle trailer reaction again. Yeah, or or maybe try a new trailer on a new movie coming. Out. Ah, <laughs> that's funny, dude. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. Well, we could do a, a Oppenheimer trailer reaction. You know, before that movie came out. So anyway, uh, yeah, I have a uh, Andreas Pop Culture channel presents Facebook, Instagram, and uh, Pin Interest. Check it out. Uh, so recently, I just put out a Star Wars: Return of the Jedi 40th Anniversary True Root. Uh, today, I did uh, post a Flash Two discussion 
uh, Andrea's Pop Culture Talk. Uh, now, uh, so next week, I'm probably going to release a podcast on the Fast and Furious films, Frank. I'm just putting together some of the uh, raw papers and images for that. Um, yeah, and then that's, that's, that's it. And oh, and next week, I'm going to have a podcast with my good friend, host, Chris, uh, to you know, discuss Fast 10, but also the new Evil Dead movie, Evil Dead Rises. So I'm very excited for that. I'm going to see that film on this Sunday. So, yeah. So this is going to be exciting next week. So check it out. Um, but, yeah. Uh, and right now I'm up to 750 subscribers. So thank you, everyone, for supporting me. Just hit that subscribe button and hit that like button, please. So I can continue on with my content and slash podcasts. There you go. That's it, baby. And you know what, folks? I was pretty soon I'm going to have something to plug myself because I, I'm working on my logo for my new YouTube channel, for my own individual content, Dick Pick Logic. It's going to be awesome, baby. I can't wait. You know, with a title like Dick Pick Logic, it's going to be good, baby. How could it be bad? There you go. Anyways, to explain your any, your question, Andres, about the whole deal with uh, the alien bug thing and whatnot, everything, what was going on with that tentacle deal and all that, it's very possible, I think, that there might have been a connection in some way, right? I don't know. I could be off with... Um, baby certain, leg, I got this shit, like... The baby leg, there, it was a baby leg, baby. That's what it was, the baby leg. Anyways, folks, sorry, right, Shark? I have nothing to plug, sir. Uh, then you guys, and my appreciation to both of you. And I want to thank Cyber Night Shark, of course, for a great weekend over in Daytona Beach at Rockville. Um, and, you know, defending me and, um, and protecting me and keeping me safe. And, uh, you know, and we had a good time together and everything and whatnot. And Andres, you've been great, man. You've been killed on the panel, bro. Appreciate you, bro. Um, thank you. You know what I'm saying? I hope you all fight it out and find these fucking 1,000 subs, dude, and like shit gets all nasty and whatnot and everything. It's funny. I think it's cool. I love it. I love seeing y'all compete against each other and shit. It's, it's interesting. But no, I got another plug with, with all with my teammates and whatnot and everything. It's a bleeding edge. I know how much we appreciate everybody out there. Tess, it was good to see you. Joss, I know, I know that was you or Andrew or Joey or somebody out there. I don't know why Facebook doesn't just show your name. Um, I never, I have never really understood that, but whatever. Uh, either way, Joss, we love you out there, hon. You're a great supporter. Um, and um, hey, you know what? Uh, look, this Sunday... I've got the first part of the Mandalorian season three breakdown and recap. I put a lot of work into it. I'm gonna be. I'm really proud of the time I put in. I hope. I'm hoping I don't fucking totally kill, like blow it, like suck at it, and like blow it. You know, kill not kill it. But we'll see what happens. It's gonna be a three parter every Sunday from the next three Sundays, and um, we got some good people coming on from and whatnot and everything. So it'll be fun. Um, so Sunday, this Sunday, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Um, though no Jasmine will no longer be on the show with me on Sundays. Um, we'll not be tolerating on the bleeding edge, uh, forced fucking diversity and shit and whatnot, and like fucking trying to fucking uh race bend and fucking gender bend characters and whatnot just for no fucking reason. It's not gonna it's not gonna fly here, and that's not gonna happen anymore. We're not gonna have that kind of bullshit. So so that's done. No more of that crap. It's over, and uh, we ain't fucking around no more with the bleeding edge, man. You feel me? It ain't, it ain't like that no more. So, you know, the thing the thing that ain't, doesn't need to be black. Anyways, I apologize, folks. No, no, no politics here. But thank you very much, everybody. Have a good night. Um, it was good to see everybody. Sir, Cyber, great job tonight. Great film. And hey, awesome to see everybody actually fucking a 10, a 10, and 9.5 is pretty close. Yeah, it's, it's top notch. It was. It was a good film. So God bless everybody. Take care. Thank you guys. Appreciate you very much, Cyber. Andres. Tax. Everybody out there. We'll see you later. Bring the band in.